Director of Developer Services, and really happy to be here. I was actually supposed to give this talk two years ago, and then came down with a gnarly version of the flu, so I had to miss the whole thing. We <laughs> shared the slides down now. Uh, yes, although these are different. I've actually, I've actually embellished these. I mean, uh, uh, updated, updated the these since last time. Yeah, and that's not even me. Um, that's my stunt double. But anyway, so this is this is the program. It's called Project Sputnik. And before I get into the interesting stuff, let me just show you where this fits in contextually with what we're doing at Dell. So one of the big things that we're doing, particularly in Dell Services, and that's the professional services group I'm in, is uh, we've started a practice around digital transformation, which is consulting-led. And then you get all the, the smack stack there, plus IoT, social, mobile, analytics, and cloud, which is our digital technology services. And all of these are supported by customer case studies that we've helped to build up digital transformation, plus Dell case studies where we ourselves have used digital transformation or digital technology within our own group. And that's where this story fits in. So now, let's turn to our story. So it all began with an idea about three years ago. We had a consultant who came in and said, hey, you know it would be really cool if you guys put Ubuntu on a developer laptop, uh, 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 sorry, Dell laptop. Because at that point, there really weren't any uh, top-level OEMs who were preloading Ubuntu on a, on a laptop. So I remember thinking that is an awesome idea, but totally impractical. It's never going to happen at Dell. They're going to ask me, how many millions of units are you going to sell? And I'm going to say, well, not really. And then they're going to they're going to just scrap the whole thing. So I put the idea on a shelf and thought, wow, that would be neat if we could do it. And then, yes, sir? Was it an Ubuntu guy or a canonical guy? Or was it someone completely separate? Where did the idea come from? No, it was who, it was, who pitched this to you? Um, no, it's, uh, Stephen O'Grady from Red Hat, whom I've known for a while. He came yes. in. We were doing a, we were doing a web um, vertical program, and we were just shooting out ideas. And so he said, he said hey, why not do this? Yeah, and I actually had worked with Ubuntu for a long time in a past life, so to me this, this made a lot of sense. So what happened was there was a, a Dell Innovation Fund that, that came about. So think of this as an internal angel fund um, that was started to get great ideas locked in people's heads and bring them to the fore. So something that wouldn't necessarily go through our normal processes, um, but would be something that would be helpful to Dell. And so I went in front of a, a group of three individuals. One was the um, uh, chief of staff for Michael Dell at that time, head of strategy in our server group, head of strategy in corporate, um, in corporate, and pitched this idea to them. Um, hey, let's take the Ubuntu laptop, sorry, put Ubuntu, put it on one of our really new cool laptops. So that was something else that had happened since the original idea was, was pitched, because pitched, you can tell, pretty utilitarian, kind of clunky, and whoops, that we actually had a real cool uh, laptop that came along. So I went in front of those people, and I pitched to them, and I said, I want to introduce you to Project Sputnik. This is how it's going to work. First of all, we're going to involve the developer community in product development. So unlike certain people in Cupertino who do the big reveal after keeping things very secret, what we're going to do is we're going to involve developers from the beginning, get their ideas, and use that to drive this product. Second thing is this is going to be a real scrappy effort. This is not going to be a huge group of, of hundreds of people. It's going to be a very small focus group uh, to do this. And this is this will also give it, this will make us hungry. It'll also give us more um, credibility with the developer community. Whoops. So, of course, we want to, we want to get profit for, from it, but that really wasn't the big thing. The real big thing is we want to court developers who are an extremely influential group um, in IT today. And so we can get them thinking that, hey, Dell's a cool company. When we come to sell them other things, they will whisper to the IT guys, our gal's ear that, hey, these guys, are, these guys are pretty good. So obviously, I pitched it to the, to the three people, and they went nuts. They said, this is the best idea I've ever heard. They high-fived me all over the place. No, not really. So it was, it was more like a grilling. Um, so how would, what would stop HP from doing the exact same thing? Um, what, we tried this already with Ubuntu preloaded, and it wasn't a success. Why would it work? 
Uh, and the main reason for that is, and I knew that was going to be something that it would bring up, is when we tried it before, it was a completely different positioning. The idea is, hey, we've got a free OS, let, let's put it on our cheapest laptop and sell it at a real low price. The only problem was it wasn't positioned carefully and it wasn't, there wasn't enough information. So what happened is people would buy this for their mother, their mother would get it, and ah, this is not what I'm used to, I can't run all the, the programs I'm normally used to, and then it, it didn't do very well at all. So anyway, I, I went to talk to all these folks, and I finally did get the green light <coughs> after about a month. So the Ides of March, I got the, the approval from the Innovation Fund. Um, before that, so this period is what I call the don't make ourselves look stupid phase. So although we were going to do this out in the open, that was the plan, what we didn't want to do is go out and hurt ourselves as far as people saying, obviously Dell doesn't have a clue, they think this is a good idea, this is stupid. So we just want to sanity check it. So we went out and we talked to some developers in Austin, get, got their feel, got their thumbs up, then we came out here to the west coast and talked to a really big web company here and then flew up north and talked to another really big web company and there was interest. They didn't throw up all over it. So we thought, okay, I think we can we can go forward with this. So and just as a little uh, back up a little bit, this whole program, I was given six months to prove this out, see if it could become a real product or not. And I was given a very small pot of money. Uh, basically it was a hundred thousand dollars of which I think I only got forty. Um, because they were too cheap. Um, so anyway, so we went, uh, I, I went this, and this is where we went public. And so we announced it via my blog and at the, the Ubuntu Developer Summit, which was the last one they held, it's actually here in Oakland, um, last one they held face to face. And this is an example of how we struck a nerve. So here's my blog traffic, and you can see prior to this I've got 65 viewers, 99, a whopping 21. The day I announced it, it was 6,000, then 9,000, then 15,000. And then the total viewers has been over 70K. And so just to put that in perspective, the normal uh, view over the life of a blog I post is, well, pre-Sputnik, pre, uh, because those have gotten a lot, was about 500. So normally I get 500 here, I got 70,000. Uh, and I think the thing that was particularly interesting was the fact that they gave us so much credit. I thought for sure there was going to be a lot of people who said, why should we believe you? You guys put out Ubuntu on a laptop before, it just totally failed. We're not going to believe you again, because oftentimes developers have long memories. But that wasn't the case. And as this, this show here, uh, Mark Shuttleworth, the CEO of Ubuntu, launched it, uh, actually Canonical, but who started Ubuntu, launched it here. And this is, in case you're wondering where we got the, the name of the project, after he made all his millions in the dot-com era, he went and paid $25 million to go up in a Russian spacecraft. It actually was Soyuz, but that's not as cool as Sputnik, so that's why we went to Sputnik. Um, so we also said in the blog that what we're going to be doing is collecting feedback, and we'd like to know what you'd like to see in a laptop that we produce for you. And we we're very open from the beginning saying, we don't know if this will ever be a real product or not, but if you guys, if you get enough positive feedback, maybe we'll be able to do it. So that was one thing we were very open and upfront from the beginning, which is another reason why I was so surprised that we got 70,000 uh, views on something that wasn't even technically a, a, going to be a product necessarily. So here are the six things that we got that people said they wanted. Don't make it more expensive than Windows. Make it work <coughs> with a vel uh, vanilla image, at least eight gigs of RAM. Obviously no Windows installed, pre-installed, no CD or DVD, and they wanted support that came along with it. Yes? So did you offer these up as options, or was this just pure feedback, you know, grassroots feedback that you got from them, or did you kind of frame it? And no, um, it you know, I think here, uh, basically said, you know, what would you like to see? It was basically, it. we didn't say, would you want eight gigs or four gigs, you know, what's the memory you like, what type of support option? So it was just, and this is what <coughs> bubbled to the top from ideas, so we can vote things up or down. So what was the format of feedback? Was it just emails? People just say, just write back whatever you want? Or no, this is, so or? it's actually called Idea Storm. Oh, okay. And you, you put something there, and you saw something that somebody else wanted, and you thought, that's great, you vote it up. Sort of a crowd source. Yeah, of that. exactly. Um, and so here's how we took it from there. 
So we we had some, when we originally launched it, we said we've got the laptop and we've got a, an image that works with it, but it still kind of has a bunch of holes in it. One of them, the biggest one being the touchpad. So that was something we worked with um, the, the Synap guys from Synaptics to get that working. Uh, and then we, after we did that, we upstreamed it to the 3.9 kernel. Um, the real tipping point came, the next step is said, we said we're going to do a beta program. Uh, and we uh, got 6,000 people who signed up for it. We thought maybe it's 600. And this was 6,000 people who had to write um, what computer they, what, what laptop do you use now? What kind of development do you do? What kind of company do you work for? Long list of questions. It wasn't just tick this box if you're interested in, in joining the beta program. <clears throat> so when we got that, we thought, wow, this, this is going to be the real deal. So we announced it at OSCON, the open source conference. Uh, and told everyone that product was going to come be uh, available in the fall. So basically, in a month, uh, sorry, not in a month, in about two weeks after we found out the beta program was so well, we spun it around and said we're going to launch this. Um, and I have to say that this isn't typically the way things work at Dell. Um, one of the reasons why we are able to offer at such uh, uh, prices and, and with such quality is you follow a, a pattern. And you go, it's like a dragster, right? You can go a million miles an hour in one direction, but you can't take that thing off-road. And this was much more of an off-road type of an effort. So here's, in case you don't know, drivers are really hard to run. So this is the kind of stuff developers don't like to do. There's a lot of stuff they do like to play with and fix and don't mind if there's something uh, they have to get their hands dirty, but it's not usually drivers. I know that in the gym, so you know. All right. Oh, yeah. um, and so basically, from there, we did, from when we announced it, we had 19 weeks to launch. Uh, and we launched it on the 29th of, this is, uh, sorry, 2012, uh, launched it in US and Canada. And then the first feedback we got about this was, hey, great system, <coughs> crappy uh, resolution on the uh, monitor. And so two months later, we came out with a full HD version of this, which was the key complaint, and we also launched it in EMEA. So here's basically, we're, we've done three generations, the fourth is coming soon, and this is, these are the specs. Basically, we start out with a long-term support version of Ubuntu 12.04, basic set of tools and utilities, uh, here's some key links, and here's the, the basic specs of it. The other thing that we had at the start, one of the great ideas is we were going to connect it to the cloud. We were then also going to do a profile tool, which is kind of what Docker's doing now, which is the idea of making stacks that you could download very easily so you could develop on them. Unfortunately, this didn't this part didn't work out. So you know, best laid of best laid plans of mice and men, we've taken many runs at this, and it just hasn't panned out. Um, that being said, for a big part, there were some people who got really excited about this, but for the most part, they just wanted a laptop that worked. So it really didn't hurt us that much. And then here's our here's the actual team. So we are not a big team. There's five of us. Uh, none of us are full time. And then who here sings Spinal Tap? Anyone? Long time ago. All right, so you remember the drummer, right, who keeps blowing <laughs> up the multiple ones? That's like the, the program manager. So Amber's our latest, but we have had very many program managers rotate out just because they get pulled onto other projects that the company thinks are more important. That being said, Amber is, has been amazing. She's been with us the longest. And same as with all these people, there's really a passion to keep doing this. Maybe it's not their real job description. For example, Jared, he's on Linux, he's on the server on Linux engineering, but this is sort of her, his 20% project like they do at Google. So as I say, we're small and scrappy and, and none of us work full time. So what's next? Well, one of the things that, that we did was, this is Jared again, like all Coders, he coats standing up with a rabbit under his foot. And so what he was really excited doing is he wanted to make a more powerful version of this. And so we had a, a precision workstation. And so he himself just went and started working with it and got it to work. So when we, when we launched our third generation of Sputnik, the XPS 13 version, the smaller one, he, we put, and, and it's unofficial big brother, and told him how to get it going. Etc. We also said, just like the other things, 
it would be awesome if we could turn this into a real product, but to do so, we're going to need feedback from you all to tell us that you really want it. Because if customers want something, we're going to do it. Um, but not all the time, but yes, for the most part. Um, so here's the, here's the line. And so this, is, this became a real boy. This is what Jared was working on in all the specs. It's, it's, it's a real big, beefy machine. And this is coming up very soon. It should have been out already. This is the fourth generation of the smaller version. Um, it, the problem is, is that we've had uh, more touchpad drivers that we're using a different touchpad. Um, but I think we've got that all sorted. And stay tuned, because it, it should be coming up soon. Um, so how has the idea been received? We've gotten great press. So here's Wall Street Journal, O'Reilly Radar, TechCrunch. <coughs> gives, laptop gives Dell credibility in the open source developer community, which is exactly what we wanted. Uh, this could be a game changer uh, in interest to CIOs because it will help them eliminate cost and speed up the development process. And so this was really less about the number of units we were going to sell. It was about what kind of buzz could we create in this space that makes us look sexy as opposed to just providing utilitarian good hardware. And so how has it been reviewed? So this one I love in Ars Technica. Dell's substantial investment pays off. This is five part-time people, and as I said, we didn't even get the like forty thousand um, dollars. There was some conference recently where they're I was going to think about going and talking, and they said, "Well, to sponsor it's, it's twenty thousand dollars," and I said, "That is that is half of our entire budget that we use." And so, but anyway, I'm get to talk anyway. But that's that's a whole other story. But the PC world, thing of beauty, five sorry four out of five stars. Laptop was a dream. So really excited. But even more exciting is on the social media side, what people were saying. And this is the kind of stuff that really matters, right? It's people like what, well, they, they respect ours technique when they read it, but what their fellow uh, developers say. So I would, try, I would trade my MacBook Air, uh, spoiled by my Dell Sputnik Linux laptop, on Mac today and feel like I'm computing with crayons. Uh, this one I really like is I've never been a big fan of Dell, but after I heard about Sputnik, I bought an XPS 12 right away. Really excited, good move. So that was something we were trying to do, is change perceptions of pe how people thought Dell. And this is another great one here from someone's blog. Well, I did something I never thought I would. I bought a brand new high-end Dell laptop for full price. Me. Hell will be freezing over shortly. Um, and then here's something else that I learned, and, and you may be aware of this from dealing with developers, is oftentimes people will seem very trolly. So here's a gentleman in Denmark who was just not pleased that he couldn't find it on, uh, on the Danish site. Ooh, I guess you don't ship these models in Denmark, expletive deleted F something or other. Um, not the first time it happens. This is why I never buy Dell products, never ship the products and see a bigger profit. So at that point, I just wrote back this thing saying, hey, this, this should be available in Denmark. I shot up an email to the team to find out what's going on. Thanks for flagging this, stay tuned. Sounds really nice, Barton George, thanks for the quick answer. So one thing I found is if you just reach out to these people who seem so, you, you normally you think, oh, there's no way I'm gonna convince somebody who's so angry but I find nine times out of ten, if you take a deep breath, walk away from the keyboard, because that's something that wasn't my first response to something like that. Um, Those aren't expletives. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I was going to use some of his words right back. No. Um, yeah, I've noticed that oops. too, actually, especially on Twitter when you have to compress your comments so much. Right. A lot of emotion can be read into something when it's really not there. Mm -hmm. So basically, I'm going to get to the five concluding what do we learn things, which I think a lot of these we've heard through some of the, the talks today, um, but I will reiterate. So number one, get a champion. You need someone higher up to go to bat for you. And not only that, but you need an enlightened person. So who's willing to be scrappy just along with you. So this was, as I said, this was the, um, he's now the VP of the, in software, but he was Michael Dell's chief, chief of staff, so he carried some weight around there. And people always thought that Michael himself was somehow involved, but they didn't quite know, so they had that aura over it. He also was very, um, what should I say, I won't say lax, but very aware of 
when I came in to present the status is that let's don't make this complicated. As you all probably know, and I've done this past, is you've got a review with a VP, you spend a whole week together crunching numbers, putting together PowerPoints, all this time that you could have been actually working on your project. And I would actually just half hour before just take a piece of paper, sketch out, here's the main topics, here's going well, here are the problems, etc. So that really helped in a project like this. The other one is be human, this is the key tenet of it, speak directly and, and be transparent. Don't over promise, so you err on the side of caution, deliver on what you say you will. That being said, no one is perfect, right? And you own it when you screw up or fail to deliver. And I think that's one of the key things I've heard in other industries. It's not about are you going to make a mistake, it's how do you recover once you do make a mistake. As opposed to, oh no, this isn't our fault or whatever. Uh, and then number five, this is that, that gentleman from Denmark points it out, and I've got lots of stories like this. Um, Lars from Sweden, that's a whole other one. But treat everyone with decency. Don't write anyone off too soon. Um, and so here's, here's how you can get to it, dell.com slash, slash Sputnik, or developers. My blog's martingeorge.net, I'm Martin808. And if you just Google Project Sputnik, you, you find that. So with that, I open it up to, to any questions. You know what? Sort of yes, a semi-technical one. With the drivers and the development work you did here, 